Accessibility Focus Group, Campus Consolidation, TxDOT, Campus Consolidation Project. The new Texas Department of Transportation Campus Consolidation Project is located on Stastny Lane. This is nearby the Austin Bergstrom Airport and has both access from Burleson Road and Stastny Road. Agenda. This presentation is broken into three sections. The first section is the site overview and shows how it's oriented to the various roads and how to access from those roads into the site itself. The presentation transitions into the interior space of the office building, looking at various floors and various amenities that are on each of these floors. The third portion of the presentation focuses on the office building itself and some of the signages throughout the facility that allow people to identify where they are on various floors. Site overview. Overall pedestrian path system. This is the overall pedestrian path system slide. It consists of an overall image of the Stastny campus, and it has a legend that breaks down the various types of linkages that we have throughout the site. This facility has a space for people to be able to enjoy the 50 acres of wildlife and various features around the site, and provides almost three miles of trails throughout the facility. The orientation of the pedestrian path system on this slide is repre represented as north at the top of the page, south at the bottom, east is to the right, and west is to the left. The orientation of the pedestrian path system is how the site is laid out in reality. Moving through the slide deck, that orientation of north always being up will help focus your attention on the various parts of the facilities. On the north, there is Burleson Road, to the east is Stastny Lane. Stastny Lane is the main entrance to the facility for both employees and visitors to the site. There is also a proposed transit stop. TxDOT has worked with Capital Metro to provide a transit stop at this particular site. A Cap Metro, other small, smaller van pool vehicles and automobiles have access to the front of the building to drop people off that may need to be dropped off at the front door. The main focus of this slide is to show the trails that are actually accessible. There are various correlations here. The ones that are by the proposed transit stop are a brownish color and are called community connectors. They connect the outside of the site to the site itself and there is a connector off of Burleson Road on the north. It's not developed at this time, but future talk with CAP Metro indicate that there might be transportation corridors running along Burleson where there may be an additional drop off in the future. It doesn't exist now, but those community connectors bring you from the street, from the surrounding areas to the interior of the site. The green color on the slide makes up the majority of the walkways and our concrete sidewalks. Those sidewalks meet all ADA regulations and in most cases are more gener generous than the minimum requirements. The goal for this project was not to just meet the minimum requirements but exceed them whenever possible. Those sidewalks go around the external periphery of the site and connect to various buildings. There are buildings on this overall site plan. To the east is the office building. It is about 400,000 square feet of office area. It has amenities from cafeterias, 
to meeting areas, coffee shop, and various other amenities that you might find in an office building. And then moving to the north and slightly to the west, we have the parking garage, which is a six story, 1,600 car parking structure with accessible spaces within the parking garage and outside. Continuing to the west at the northern part, we have materials and testing laboratory and moving south, a warehouse and print shop facilities. There's also a single shop laboratory. The green color is the predominant pathway and our concrete sidewalks that connect all the buildings together. On the interior of the image, there is a natural pathway that comes off within the courtyard of the office building and parking garage that is called the Great Lawn. It has areas that you can sit at. They are shaded areas and trees. There are some pathways that meander through into a more natural-like setting and go to these trail nodes. These trail nodes have places where you can sit, desk to utilize, and other various things as you move through it. There are several of them on the trail. There are some other trails that are on the site, but they are not accessible primarily due to topographic features that is running through the center of the property, which is a creek. The west side and east side of the property are separated by a creek bed that is approximately 40 feet below the office building. Some of the drops are very dramatic. More than 50% of the trails are fully accessible. That is the overall pedestrian path system. Accessible Route Experience Diagram. This slide is also a picture of the overall site plan that contains a diagram showing the accessible route experience. There are callouts that draw your attention to the various features. There is a legend on this slide to the right with six items listed. At the top of the legend, Rain Garden is listed and represented by a plant in a blue circle. A rain garden is a drainage feature that has plants, rocks, and things in it to make it have a very natural feel. It serves the purpose of containing stormwater or runoff so it can drain slowly and not flood the areas below. The next one down is Transit Stop, represented by a bus and a red circle. There is a transit stop on Stastny Lane. The third one is a pink circle with a butterfly inside and represents a pollinator attractor, kind of a fancy word for flowers. Those are naturally planted areas that have a lot of color in them. They are close to the building, so they make a very nice approach to the building and these outside areas. The biggest colored area is wildflower flower prairies, represented by a green circle with a flower inside. The site contains the typical Central Texas landscape with a mixture of flowers, grasses, and native plants that require a very minimal amount of irrigation. Next on the legend is a tree inside of a purple circle that represents shaded seating areas that are scattered throughout the facility. Last in the legend is a bench in an orange circle. That represents path nodes, which have various places for you to sit and other activities. Pedestrian experience diagram. Example, rain gardens. This slide provides more detail and corresponds with the legend. It focuses on the rain garden pedestrian experience. The drawing shows the front entry of the facility and the office building. There are two colored patches that represent the rain gardens and serve as drainage structures. To the right of the diagram, there are two photographs. One shows a rain garden adjacent to, the, to a sidewalk. The other one shows a rain garden experience through a parking lot. These are very natural areas with a lot of gravel that allows the rain to accumulate and does not allow standing water. 
Although the rain garden is an amenity, it serves a very strong environmental purpose. Pedestrian experience diagram, example, transit stop. There is a drawing that shows the transit area to the west of Stastny Lane. There is a very natural area with plantings and trees to provide shade. It's a comfortable area with good visibility, so you feel safe as you're navigating through the space. To the right of this drawing is a typical, typical example of a shade structure with some bench type seating so that you're out of direct sunlight while you're waiting for the transportation structures to come and pick you up to take you to your destination or drop you off at the destination. This accessible path extends from Stastny all the way to the front door and is a very nice path to walk on for general exercise. Pedestrian experience diagram, example, pollinator attractor. On this slide is a diagram of the pedestrian experience pollinator attractor. These are flowering native species that give color and variety to the landscape. And they are typically close to buildings. They are typically close to buildings to lessen the required maintenance. On the front east side of the building, there is a public visitor entrance. There are planting beds and flowering gardens on the east side as well. To the west, through the office building, there is a main courtyard area between the parking garage and office building that show those areas as boundaries between circulation paths and the building that more natural landscapes outside of that area. On the south of the office building, there is another exterior courtyard that is a more formal area with a nice shade structure over the top of it. The exterior of it is designed to have planting beds, so it is a very natural but protected area. It is also on the secure side of the building. The public side is to the east of the office building, and basically everything to the west is secured by gates and fences. So there is a very protected area to walk and meander through these trails while on the facility site. Pedestrian experience diagram. Example, shaded seating area at the plaza. The next slide shows seating areas along the plaza. On the left side, there is a courtyard area between the parking garage and the office building. And the colored areas are areas that have shade structures. Some areas have picnic tables that may form around a tree to provide a canopied shade. There are actual architectural structures that provide shade and have little notches into the ground next to the office building that allow a person to just sit off the circulation path, but still allow one to be engaged with what's happening in circulation with the Great Lawn. To the right, there's an example of a seating nook. This is one that uses vegetation to create a kind of notch in the hedge so that one can sit and relax and have a conversation with someone or multiple people and yet be able to still be right on the main circulation. More formal shaded seating is on the bottom. It is like the large shaded seating area that's to the east of the Great Lawn. It is an architectural feature to provide a termination of the view from the cafeteria. This looks into the Great Lawn and then out to the shaded seating areas. Pedestrian experience diagram example accessible path node. The next slide highlights one of the accessible path nodes. These nodes are areas where trails come together and provide multiple directions from that point or can be used as a destination point. There is a drawing to the west of the large shade structure identified as the Great Lawn in the previous slide. This is where the trails merge into a more natural, formalized environment as depicted in the top photograph. This nature path is about 100% accessible 
and winds through these paved areas so that they are easy to navigate. Accessible furniture can be placed in these areas where a person can pull up and join a group up at the table. Various types of furniture can be used at each of these accessible nodes. Site plan, accessible parking. The previous slides focused on the trail system, how to navigate the site, pretty much in a pedestrian format. The next slides focus on accessible parking and how it is distributed across the site. The major accessible parking area in the front is at the main drop off of the office building on the east side as you come from Stastny and go through the turnaround in front of the building. That is a zero elevation curb so that even if you are in a van and you're dropped off at the front door, there is no curb to navigate. That entire curb is flush with the drive and allows for easy access and transition from the building out into the accessible parking area for drop-offs. On the far west side, there are additional structures. The materials laboratory is on the north side and at the main entrance to the laboratory is where accessible parking is located. Further south, there are two different sides of the warehouse. On the north side is the print shop and the rougher graphics area. There is accessible parking to access those activities. And on the south side of the warehouse, there is a single laboratory with surface parking that is accessible once by the main entrance into the area of the building. These areas that have been described above are the accessible surface parking areas. Parking garage, accessible parking, level one. The next slide describes the main level of the parking garage located towards the exterior of the building. North is up as the same orientation that was described on previous slides. The orientation stays the same. On level one, there's a very high ceiling. This is a 16 foot high ceiling throughout. Full size vans can get into this area and park and is accessible to other vehicles and cars. This is the main entrance to the main building or office building. Vehicles parked in one of these accessible spaces permits direct entry into the elevator lobby. All TxDOT employees enter the building on level one. Parking garage, accessible parking, level two and three. On levels two and three, there is accessible parking on the same location as the first floor. The floor to ceiling heights are not as high as the first level, and they are still very substantial and easy to navigate. There is much more headroom for bigger vehicles on the ground floor. When entering the main building on levels two and three from the accessible spaces, you would go into the elevator lobby and take it down to level one. Level one is the main entrance to the building. You would take the elevators to the end of the building. Parking garage, flat parking, levels one through six. The general layout of the parking garage is flat parking. This slide is a floor plan for the parking garage. Basically all levels one through six that show flat parking. There's a speed ramp in the center of the parking garage for two-way traffic. All these traffic paths are two ways, but the center aisle is a sloped ramp. This prevents one from getting in and out of your vehicle on a slope, as in some parking garages, and eliminates unstable positions. Persons exit their vehicle on a perfectly flat surface and make their way into the elevator lobby and down to level one and then into the building. It is very important to have level parking surfaces to aid people in the transition from their vehicle to the pathway into the building. Parking garage, super graphics, and color scheme. Within the parking garage, 
there are various levels, and this slide shows a series of images that are not necessarily images we have in our garage itself, but are representational of the graphics that will be shown. This slide is called Parking Garage Super Graphics and Color Scheme, and the various images there are taken from parking structures around the world. They use a combination of color and what we call super graphics. Graphics that are very large and easy to read from a distance. The color helps to remind visitors or employees of the parking garage floor. If there is an issue with being able to distinguish between colors, there are very large graphics that assist with identifying levels one through six more clearly. The photographs are just representational, but the color selection on the right side of the slide is also represented in the section of the stairway. It shows the colors. It shows the super graphics starting at level two and going up to level six. Those colors will continue through the building when navigating to the interior of the building. Each of the floors has a, th has a theme, and that theme is represented by a color that starts in the floor carpeting. It is different on each level and is representational of a region of Texas. This color scheme is repeated throughout the presentation. Office building. The next part of the presentation transitions to the main office building. Level one entrances. On this next slide, there is a diagram of the main entrance that shows how employees enter from the garage up to level one on the northwest side of the building. There is a call out on the northwest side of the slide that says employee entrance from garage. Below that, vertical circulation, the elevators and staircase are shown in the center of the plan. This brown color shows the entrance from the employee garage arrival through the security turnstiles overlooking the main cafeteria. The vertical circulation area in the center is the main spine of the building and the main arrival sequence for all employees coming in on level one and then dispersing through the various levels of the building vertically through either the staircase or through the elevators. On the east side of the building and in the greenish color is the staircase, the public, and visitor entrance. The entire area that is green going to the north is open to the public. It is a place where the general pub public does not have to go through the security entrance process to access the building, but can enter through the general public meetings. Below that is a call out that points to the grand staircase. That is not considered a fire escape but is a very nice, generous staircase that allows for interaction to take place within it. During an emergency situation, there are fire doors that drop down on the staircase area. It has areas of refuge for people that have accessibility issues that need to be able to call for help to let people know that they are on that floor. The first responders are able to get to them quickly and remove them from the building in a safe manner. All of our staircases have that capability. There are refuge and communications capabilities to be able to communicate with first responders. But this drawing primarily shows the public entrance on the east side and the main employee entrance coming up from the parking garage on the northwest. Level one amenities. In the next slide, various amenities throughout the building are shown. On the left-hand side, there is a scenic overlook with an outdoor patio. There is a change in grade. The great lawn is down one story below that is called the lower level. This slide depicts level one. On the outside is an outdoor patio with shade structures that are fully accessible and allows a view from a vantage point down to the great lawn. It is actually a very good view. However, you can't quite see downtown Austin. Just below that point to the center of the building is the coffee shop. It is a fully accessible 
area to get coffee, pastries, sandwiches, and things that might be sort of a grab and go that are related to the coffee shop environment. Directly across from the coffee shop is a lounge area where you can sit, work, and collaborate with various people. It is a very informal environment, just like any coffee shop. The lounge area is central to the core of the building. It is one of the first areas that an employee enters and may purchase items on the way to their workspace for the day. On the right hand side of the slide, at the top, there is a call out that identifies public conference rooms. These are areas where people come in the front door, check in with our security, and then meet with either TechStop employees or another public entity utilizing that particular space. South of that, or below the public conference rooms, is our main auditorium. This is the main gathering space for the entire facility and something that is not currently available to any TechStop location. It houses approximately 200 people and has full AV capabilities and sound reinforcing to help support those types of meetings. The next colored area on the south side of the slide is the outdoor space. It is just south of the main training rooms that are used for various types of education. The outdoor patio space allows for outdoor engagement. Visitors and employees are able to log into devices and connect to Wi-Fi throughout the site in order to work in outdoor spaces if it is a nice day. Lower level amenities. This slide depicts the servery that is located on the lower level. This is the area to choose food if you want to have breakfast or lunch. One would probably not have dinner there, but would have full service access to the servery for an extended period. Next, the dining room looks directly through the glass at the Great Lawn, with a beautiful double height space that allows a lot of daylight into this area. It is a very light, engaging area that can be used not just for lunch and dinner, but also a place for informal meetings for 20 to 50 people. Kitchen slash servery. The next slide is a portion of the plan view of the main office building and provides more detail about areas mentioned in the previous slides. First at the very top is the kitchen which is behind the curtain type of work area. TechStop employees have limited access to the kitchen, but it is extensive and allows for various types of food preparation. The main servery is entered on the east side and has various serving lines similar to a food court. Visitors and employees have many options from which to choose, including pizza and hot meals, but do not have to wait in long lines. It is a less formal and easy to navigate with a view of the Great Lawn to the south. Level 2 Amenities On Level 2, one of the amenities is a full fitness center. The fitness center includes various types of exercise machines. There are meeting areas to discuss various types of health issues, concerns, nutrition, and how to improve health. Meetings can be held within the fitness center. An on-site nurse is available on this floor to provide service to anyone in the facility. The on-site nurse is located directly adjacent to the fitness center. Fitness center. On the left side of this slide is a shaded plan view with a detailed call out of the fitness center on the right. The brownish color on the north side shows accessible lockers, showers, dressing areas, and toilet facilities. The large space contains showers and dressing rooms separate from the restroom facilities. The next callout identifies an accessible single-use restroom and shower. A single-use restroom is on all floors and is depicted in other slides. In the workout area, the architects intentionally included a single-use restroom and shower that is fully accessible in addition to the other accessible units in the men's and women's dressing rooms. To the south, the on-site nurse area is shown in greater detail. 
Just below the nurse is another one of the vertical staircases. This one is set up more like a typical fire staircase. It is not a grand or open and it does not access all the floors. There is good vertical circulation and accessibility. The training rooms and exercise equipment support health and wellness, which was very important to the initial design of the project. Level four, amenities. The next slide provides additional information about the other amenities. On the top level, there's an outdoor balcony with a wonderful view to the south. It is a very long view and a nice place to relax. A variety of experiences have been created throughout the building for everybody to enjoy. Employees can take a break from work without having to go too far to access any of those various features. Floor plan commonality, levels one through four, stairs and elevators. Navigation through the main office building is very important. There is a commonality on all floors and this next series of plan slides address the main features that are at the core of the building. This slide is specifically calling out the vertical transport systems. At the north, there's a staircase that is next to the nurse's station that goes all the way to the lower level. South of that, there is a main central staircase that has those fire doors that drop down and create a safe, secure place within the building during a storm or emergency situation. Directly to the west of that is the main elevator bank. There are five main elevators primarily used for employee vertical transportation, but there are also freight elevators. At the far western end of the building, there is another grand staircase that extends and functions as a secure space as well. Layout and vertical transportation are all on the same floors. Floor plan commonality levels one through four, restrooms. To emphasize the design, restrooms are located in the same manner on levels one through four. There is fully accessible men's and women's restrooms on the east side and one on the west side. On the western side, there is a shaded area directly across that represents one of the fully accessible single-use facilities. Commonality is maintained in the central core of the building to help people navigate and familiarize themselves with each of the floors. As you move towards the windows, things change. The furniture of the open office area is moved around based upon various needs of the divisions that occupy those spaces. In conclusion, the commonality of the interior space aids in the overall navigation of the main office building. Floor plan, commonality levels one through four, conference rooms. This slide shows the major conference rooms. The conference rooms are maintained in the same location on levels one through four and can hold from 20 to 40 people. One can have a very good idea of the location of the conference rooms, no matter the floor. Keeping that commonality between the floor levels is very helpful for people to understand where they are in the building and where they need to go. Floor plan commonality levels one through four, print and copy rooms. This slide shows the layout of the print and copy room areas. There is a full service copy and print area on the east side between the restroom and some of the offices. Behind the bank of elevators is another centralized copying area. On the far west, both on the north side and the south side, there is a shaded area designated for printing. Plotters, printers, copiers, and supplies are located here on every floor. Floor plan commonality levels one through four, break room. On this slide is the break room which towards the western side. 
It is a large and central area that has refrigeration, sinks, and coffee makers. Microwaves will not be located in the break rooms. Instead, they will be located on the lower level in a centralized location, mainly to keep smells from being dispersed throughout the floor. The break room has seating and is a place for informal conversations and community type things to happen. There is a central serving stand up bench to handle something quickly, talk to someone, or have a meet and greet. Employees can get their refreshment of choice or retrieve lunch from the refrigerator and then go outside or to the cafeteria based on their preference. This whole slide series is about the commonality of spaces. Break rooms are pretty much the same on each floor and can be navigated easily. Floor plan commonality levels one through four. Circulation. The overall circulation resides around the dense central core. The central core has restrooms, meeting rooms, break rooms, copy centers, and the vertical transportation. Key to the design was to open up the floors to have access to the central core, north and south portion of the building to maintain communication and collaborative environment to, to avoid being locked into little boxes. Signage. The next group of slides focus on signage to help you navigate spaces in the building. Floor plan color scheme. On the left side of this slide, there is a color floor plan scheme with a total of five levels. Lower level, level one, level two, level three, and level four. Each floor is associated with a Texas region and has a specific color assigned to it, beginning with the carpeting. In the picture on the right, a man is standing in front of a doorway. There is an accent color in an alcove and various images that represent a specific region of Texas. It might be a prairie, a high desert, a coastal zone, or a big thicket. The various regions around the state of Texas identify that floor and help people navigate and understand it. Also within this image is an inverted teardrop that is suspended from the wall that serves as signage to help people navigate through a corridor area. This signage can be for a restroom, meeting room, or some other item. Other visual cues are placed throughout the building that meet required standards. Floor plan color scheme. This slide represents level two. The accent color on the furniture ties back to the Texas region and the color scheme of the floor. Natural light, which is owned by no one, was very important to the design of this building. Most employees have access to windows that have a control system on them that allows daylight harvesting. If it is really bright and sunny outside, Interior lights dim down to provide a really good balance of lighting throughout the facility without glare. Glare can cause difficulty either looking at a screen, just navigating through a space, or identifying people and things. It was critical to have a high quality of light in the building to help people do their work. The goal was to avoid dark spots throughout the facility that create glare and make it difficult to adjust to an intense change in lighting. Signage and graphics. This signage graphics slide shows various types of signage. The first one on the left is the lobby of the elevators. There are three elevators on one side and two elevators on the other. The elevator lobby terminates into a wall with a large graphic that represents that area of Texas. On the right-hand side of this slide is a list of Texas regions, 
with the associated color mentioned in the previous slides. The previous one in the list is South Texas Plains, then Panhandle Plains, which is the laboratory. Level four is represented by prairies and lakes. Level three is represented by Big Bend country. Level two is represented by Gulf Coast. Level one is represented by Hill Country. And finally, the lower level is represented by Piney Woods. There are two signs to the left of the legend that are not flush with the wall surface. The locators in this graphic help one to have a better understanding of where they are in the building and helps them navigate the space. Signage and graphics. The graphics on this slide are required by the ADA and Texas Accessibility Standards. There are raised letters, tactile areas, universal images that represent toilets, women's and men's restrooms, exit stairs, and nursing parents' rooms. Braille is also associated with these images. This slide reinforces the minimal requirements and other specific height requirements on the graphics. However, to go beyond the minimum requirements, contrasting color was used to identify the location, balance lighting, and make it easier to read and navigate the space. Well building and lead. This slide contains a lot of information and is about well building and lead. It was important to use other driving features to put this building together. Well building pertains to lighting, acoustics, and air quality. The acoustic quality in the building was very important because it contains very high spaces with reflective surfaces that allow sound to bounce around. An acoustical engineer was on board to validate these spaces and ensure comfortable noise levels, avoid interference with conversations, and limit the roar of noise by using special acoustic treatments. In the middle of the slide are pictures of symbols that represent other components such as air, water, nourishment, light, movement, thermal comfort, sound, materials, mind, and community listed in the middle of the slide. Air is listed first. The quality of the air is extremely important. In order to help the environment, a much higher filtration rate is used in the building. There is a one-time pass. Air is pulled from the upper level of the building and exhausted outside. It is not recirculated. Hospital grade filtration is used to get a very high level of office building air quality to help people that have allergies or similar conditions. Water is important. How the available water is used, navigated through the facility, and the treatment of the water outside the building, like the rain gardens, help the environment. Nourishment, health and wellness, help people grow within the space. Light was mentioned earlier. Movement is a critical one. Making sure there's enough space between all the layouts of furniture and building component, components that allow for easy navigation and allow for ability to collaborate, including informal meetings that may occur throughout the day. Thermal comfort refers to air. It ensures a comfortable building with balanced humidity where it is not too dry or too humid. Sound impacting acoustic air quality was mentioned before and is very important. Materials with texture absorb, absorb more sound. Materials with smooth surfaces are more reflective and break up sound. The tactile feel of these materials respond to touch and can impact sound. And materials associated with specific, specific colors respond to light. Mind is a very broad component but applies to the destination campus. It is a place for people to visit and work in an inviting, warm environment that leads to community. A community where people work together to build and design roads that keep, people, keep the people of Texas moving. This is TxDOT. To the right of the components 
is a picture of a workspace with windows. This represents a community text dot. At the bottom of the page, the first picture to the left is a rendering of a dining room. The picture in the middle is a rendering of an auditorium. The picture on the bottom right is of lead credit categories. LEED, L-E-E-D, is a certification process that is a national program. This building was designed to a silver level of LEED. Reading clockwise, there are six LEED credit categories. The one at the very top is Sustainable Sites. Sustainable Sites addresses questions like, did we treat our site correctly? Did we take the information that was on the site and translate it in a way that this facility becomes a benefit to the site. The goal was not to degrade the site in any way, but to maintain the water and vegetation in an efficient manner. The two o'clock position is water efficiency, which addresses questions like, did we handle the water efficiency? Do we manage water efficiently? How are we taking the water off the roof? How are we containing it so that we don't cause a flood downstream. Moving down to the four o'clock position is energy and atmosphere, which focuses on how do we create an environment that is energy sufficient? How do we create an atmosphere that is conducive to doing our work that is comfortable so that it is not too dry or too humid, too hot or too cold? In the six o'clock position is materials and resources, which focuses on, did we look at how we can recycle? Did we look at materials that are native to the area that are regional so that we are not paying transportation costs from way across the continent? At the seven o'clock position is indoor environmental quality. The system is very high efficiency and limits hot and cold spots throughout the building while maintaining a very level environmental configuration throughout the facility. Then at the 10 o'clock position, there is an innovation in operations and regional priority. There are ways of controlling this building and operations that can be reviewed to ensure the building is actually meeting those goals and objectives. If not, adjustments can be made to get those environmental features functioning in the way that they need to be. TAS review. The final slide of the presentation refers to the TAS review. The Texas Accessibility Review is required of all professionals, whether an electrical engineer, mechanical engineer, or in this case, an architect. Almost 2,000 sheets of documents covering this entire facility was submitted for review. Very few comments were listed on the interior of the building. This slide is just an example of one. This is a drawing of an issue in the coffee shop where there was a double swinging gate entry for the employees to be on one side. The intent was for employees to easily walk through that swinging door to go and do things like pick up and bus trays or other activities in the coffee shop area. But there was not enough width in the opening. It was reconfigured from a double door to a single swinging door that meets the width requirements to allow full accessibility to someone that might want to work in the coffee shop area. This is just one example. However, the majority of the comments targeted the exterior area and how to make the trails more accessible. This was a critical area and the goal was to make this amenity on the site work for everyone. There were some areas where the graders were just way too steep and inaccessible to anyone. Nevertheless, a solid circulation plan makes up over half of the site and is fully accessible to everybody.